to invite the children to ease on down the aisles and join Penny and Raul Hall for a fun activity. I'd also like to thank the Honing Schmitz who hosted last night's beer and brat party. Congratulations. Congratulations to those of you who are at that party and here this morning. It's been a few years since I can happily say on a Sunday morning that I left the party before the cops showed up, but that is the case, in fact. <laughs> and while I'm being very honest with all of you, um, I hadn't seen The Wiz prior to finding out I was preaching this week. In fact, I hadn't seen any of the musicals in these series. I'm not a big musicals guy. <laughs> And I think the only musicals I've seen by choice now that I think about it are Grease and White Christmas. So for those of you who are here for the Hamilton week, I know about as much about musicals as Mike does about hip hop. Um, <laughs> however, The Wiz is an adaptation of a very familiar story. Wikipedia explains it as an urbanized retelling of L. Frank Baum's classic 1900 children's novel, The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, in the context of modern African-American culture. Now, I wouldn't consider myself urban or African-American. However, the themes present in this version, uh, as well as in the original, I think, echo uh, themes that are relevant to all of humanity. Now, as a quick refresher, our story begins with Dorothy living with her aunt and not feeling particularly at home in her current living situation. She and her dog Toto are then whisked away in a storm and land in Oz, whereupon she meets the Munchkins and is informed by the Good Witch of the North that she has killed the Wicked Witch of the East, thusly having rights to her magical shoes. Now at the beginning of the story, Dorothy is very afraid, which is not particularly profound in itself, However, I want us to pay special attention to how Dorothy and the other characters' attitudes shift throughout the story. <clears throat> Dorothy is way outside of her comfort zone at the beginning. She is in a place she has never been, and we are reminded in the prologue that she isn't predisposed to being an adventurous person. And she has no idea how to get back home when she lands in Oz. A good friend of mine once told me that life begins at the edge of your comfort zone. That is one of my favorite quotes. And after we had been using it with one another to push each other, we started debating whether the quote was, life begins at the edge of your comfort zone, or life begins at the end of your comfort zone. I think for some more of the reserved folks, the edge works better. I myself prefer the end which I do constantly struggle with. There are many things I love to do which, puts, which push me outside of my comfort zone. Obstacle races like the Tough Mudder, skydiving, riding motorcycles, things many people have no interest in doing, far outside of the comfort zone to even consider. And yet, there are aspects of my life that I find are very difficult for me to push myself outside of my comfort zone. Probably the biggest one is that I've never lived in the city. It seems illogical to some, but moving my home to a different neighborhood challenges me much more than jumping out of an airplane does. So when my friend hassles me about this, my only response can be that there is no other, or that I, that, oh, excuse me. Uh, when my friend hassles me about this, my only response is that now there is even more of a reason for me to overcome that fear, to live in the city just to push myself in ways I haven't been pushed before. Dorothy finds herself in that very position, but she doesn't have the luxury of choice. She must rise to this occasion and get herself home. She can't drag her feet on moving into the city like I can. And how is she to do that? As our opening clip showed, follow the yellow brick road. More specifically, ease on down the yellow brick road which seems quite easy at first. I mean, we are easing down the road, right? All she has to do is follow the road. There's no intersections, no navigating, no hard terrain. This sounds pretty simple in theory. But as the story progresses, it is actually quite difficult. There are both foreseen challenges that she is warned about and unforeseen challenges that lie ahead of her. And this is where the scripture for this morning enters. When Jesus is asked, what is the greatest commandment? 
he responds, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. So it's that simple. Love God with everything you've got and love your neighbor. Which makes sense, right? If we truly love God, we love what God stands for, then certainly our love of neighbor should flow out quite naturally. So why, and I'll just speak for myself here, although I can't imagine I'm the only one that feels this way, why is it so hard for me to do that? Why is it so hard for me to love my neighbor? In fact, it is so hard for me that I say the prayer of confession aloud pretty much every Sunday, and it is applicable every time. Every week I do something I shouldn't have, something stupid, usually. Uh, or I haven't, le I've left something undone that I should have done. You'd think it'd be easy to ease on down the road of Christian living when there's really only two things that are asked of us. And yet I struggle with it as much as Dorothy struggles with her foes en route to Oz. Her first companion is the Scarecrow, who in the 1978 version of the film is played by Michael Jackson, and his dancing in it is incredible if you haven't seen it. It's definitely worth just pulling up that clip on YouTube uh, later. But, so Dorothy meets the Scarecrow first, and she helps the Scarecrow off uh, of the post that he's hanging on, and her confidence already begins to build once she helps the Scarecrow. The crows had complete control over him, and Dorothy helps to set him free. If this isn't a perfect example of loving your neighbor, I'm not sure what is. And it is mutually beneficial for both the Scarecrow and Dorothy. It's almost like God designed it that way. Now, for those of you who were paying attention during the prayer of confession, you were reminded that the scarecrow is in need of a brain. Then Dorothy picks up the tin man, who is in need of a heart, and the lion, who, as Mike discussed earlier, needs courage. So we're moving pretty quickly through the story now, but I'm trying to keep this sermon to a reasonable length, so hang with me. They get to Oz. The Wiz says they have to kill the other wicked witch, which they then succeed in by soaking her in water. They return to Oz. They find out that the Wiz is a fraud, and here they have the panicked realization that the Wiz does not actually have supernatural powers and can't deliver on what each of them asked for. However, Dorothy points out that each of them demonstrated throughout the journey that they do indeed have what they were already, what they were seeking already present inside of them. The scarecrow gets put into new situations on the journey and comes up with good ideas in the moment. The Tin Man develops genuine relationships with Dorothy and the other characters and begins to experience real emotions like sadness and joy. The lion gets put in dangerous situations and, as Mike talked about, rises to the occasion, using his strength, demonstrating his courage. All these characters rose to the challenge and learned by doing. This is something I think that is worth noting. I believe that our culture is heavily based in vicarious living. With the advent of technology, we have access to almost an infinite amount of information in our pockets, which reminds me, don't forget to check in on Facebook. And this can be a great thing, but it can also be destructive, this technology. <clears throat> I can read first-hand descriptions of people doing incredible things. I can watch videos of people pushing the limits of human capacity. While you're looking up that Michael Jackson YouTube clip, also just look up People Are Awesome. There's like a bunch of videos. They're incredible. They're really in insane. Um, but if all I do is watch these videos and read these articles, then what have I learned? I can re read review after review of different kinds of workouts and gyms, but if all I do is sit on my butt reading them, it's paralysis by analysis. I haven't accomplished anything. I can argue on the internet with people all day about politics, about the best way to improve our country, about who is the most marginalized, who is deserving of support, what is the right way to go about fighting injustice, but if that's all I do, then I haven't done a darn thing to improve the world. Facebook fights, Twitter wars, TV shows to distract me, none of these things accomplish anything. These characters, the Scarecrow, the Tin Man, and the Lion, didn't sit on their phones and read about minds or hearts or courage. They dove headfirst into life and learned by doing. We have to put ourselves in a position to grow to do, to be challenged, to do the right thing. And we can't do that sitting on our phones, on our couches. 
Had Dorothy known she could just click her heels and go home immediately, this would be a pretty boring story, and Dorothy wouldn't have evolved at all as a person. That's why we just can't click our heels and get whatever we want out of life, and even if we could, that probably wouldn't do us that much good anyhow. If Dorothy didn't go on that journey, then the scarecrow would still believe that he doesn't have a brain, the tin man no heart, and the lion no courage. Similarly, Dorothy would still be confused about who she is as a person. Dorothy doesn't feel at all at home in the beginning, both in the live version, in which she grew up in the city but is now living out on the farm, or in the original film, where she is 24 and scared to move out of her aunt's house, which, just to be completely clear, definitely does not strike a chord with me. <laughs> her journey, the journey itself, was where she and the other characters found what they were looking for, not from the Wiz in Oz. Oz is a very surface level place. It's very flashy, but there's not a heck of a lot of substance to it. And this is a very real place in our culture. If we are told to buy one more thing, or get a little thinner, or maybe make a little bit more money, then maybe we'll be happy. Just like they think that if they get to Oz, all of their problems will be solved. However, this isn't the case, is it? Happiness, fulfillment, even salvation is not flashy or shiny or sexy. Heaven isn't a place where we get whatever we want. That wouldn't fulfill us as people. What does fulfill us is God, which is a lot harder, but in my opinion, worth it. Our purpose or function in this life is not salvation at the end. It's not to get to heaven or to get to Oz. Our salvation is found in our life's journey, day in and day out practicing justice and mercy. We are here to discover our inner potential, our power in this life, and to use that in order to make the world more like Jesus would want it to be. The greatest commandment is not something we do one time. It is not something we do so that we can get into heaven, ultimately to go home to God. We have the power to be at home with God today, right now. The greatest commandment is the guiding principle with which we are to live our daily lives in this journey of life. At the end of the 1978 film, the Scarecrow says, success, fame, and fortune, they're all illusions. All there is, all that is real, is the friendship that two can share. And God seeks this friendship with us when we love God and when we take the time to get to know God better. And God wants us to express that friendship by loving one another, by taking the time to get to know other people better. Now, is it easy? Can I do it by just easing down the road? No. Can I stay in my comfort zone and do it? No. What about just reading an article about it on my phone? No. However, will I become a better person? A better Christian? Will I continue to grow my brain, my courage, and my heart? Can salvation be something each and every one of us can experience every day? Absolutely. We just have to go out there and do it. And for that, we can thank God.